Well, good evening, all. I wrap Stan, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Thursday evening, April. 4, what is it? No, April eighteenth. I just had to think that one through. Twenty twenty four, and we're at six forty p.m. Central Time. All right. So it is still one of these markets that is seeing selling pressure in the stock indices, and it's building momentum. Now, this is the first prolonged break you have seen and I have seen where the market doesn't quickly come down a couple of percentage points and then get gobbled up and you went up and made new highs. The market changed its character, and I did my very best this week to point that out to you. And this morning, even in my full research report that I put out at 11.30 or so, I told my traders as the market was trying to be higher, and I said, don't, don't buy into that. I said, this market's finding it easier in the second part of the day to sell off than rally, and that's just what happened in the marketplace. The gold market and the, the metal markets and as a group, gold and silver, there's a lot of divergence. You have price action still bullish, but you have momentum turning bearish. I don't like when that happens. As for the dollar, picked itself up at the expense of a number of the currencies. And so far, the Japanese government is content to let the yen ebb. Now, I want to use that word carefully ebb lower. A tick here, a tick there, five ticks, nothing real crazy. A little bit of a relief bounce in the bonds and notes, but I don't think it has legs to the upside. So when we look at the S&P on a weekly close-only chart, I told you starting on Monday or Tuesday that I thought the market might pull back to the 18. Uh, this is the week. I have day there. That's my mistake. To the 18-week moving average of close. Shame on me. I just noticed that. I'll fix that later. Um, and that's where I think the market's first support comes in. Now, I'm reading reports. When is the money on the sidelines going to start coming in? Is this the time for people to start gobbling up the mag five or six, whatever those stocks that are left? It certainly isn't uh, Tesla at this point. Uh, and Apple. So, you know, I'm not saying they aren't good companies down the road, but Tesla's been a major disappointment now for a, quite a while. When you look at the S&P, does that look like a bullish chart to you? If it does, I think you better go back to my chart school. And by the way, my new charting service is out. It's on the website, irapstein.com under education. You might want to take a look at it. Lower highs, lower lows. You see how the market is working itself still down. And look at how it fell apart. Now, in the past, we'd get these short breaks, remember? And the market just kept making higher highs. The nature of the market began back here when all of a sudden you took out a previous low and then you had lower highs with it, it changed the game. For a moment, you lift it up and then you had this vertical price decline, which you're still in. Vertical declines are the hardest thing to catch, to trade off of, because where do you put a stop? You're gonna put a stop back over that high? That doesn't make sense. And it's fed off itself all the way down. Where might it go? Well, there's two numbers I look at. Are there any major moving averages under the market? If there are, I always look. There's the 100-day average of closes. That's an important average. Gives you a lot of the year there. Traders focus on that. And then I look at the Bollinger Band. And this is the Gorilla Glue trade. And you heard me mention that during this week. It's when the market latches on. It takes four days to do that. And once it does it, Every day it keeps going, it's merciless. So you get traders that are in the market, they're the wrong way, oh, it's gonna bounce, it's gonna bounce, and they just keep hanging in. Well, this is also what's going on of the 500 stocks. When you add the values together, they're going down just that same way, and people are looking at their portfolio and going, well, now I'm losing money. Well, that's what normally it's about. You make some, you lose some. We, you, got spoiled last year. It was just a bull market that never ended. This is not that same bull market. You've ended since the beginning of the year, and this is so important to realize, the game is in a correction. Now, whether the bull comes back or not this year, nobody knows the answer to that. But what I can tell you right now, this market's under selling pressure, not buying pressure. And you're liable to embed. You have to have three 
days in a row of closes where the slow stochastic is under 20. You can't count tonight because we don't know what tomorrow will hold, but we can count Thursday, the day before you were at 17, and the day before you weren't. So tomorrow's a very important number on weekly charts, daily charts as to what this does. Uh, it's not quite the case in the NASDAQ. It's just going to stay oversold. And it didn't even stop today at the 100-day average in the Bollinger Band. It's been riding it. It's got the Gorilla Glue part. But normally, it pays more attention to the 100-day average. This is problematic for the market. Could it be headed back to the 200-day average? I don't know. That's the next support. The Dow got under the 100 and never looked back. It got lower and now it's just gone sideways, but it has an embedded reading. Embedded means to me until that's lost, the pros use this action and they try to sell the market to go even lower. And then I get to the Russell, which is now down to the 200 day average. That's a one year average. So I promise you all these people that were sitting here and I heard it, and I kept saying, I don't understand what they're doing. And you heard me say that here on so many of them. They're buying the low cap because they look cheap to them because the, the big cap stocks got away. These people are all underwater for the whole year. So as an index, this thing's very much in the red. And now you're at a major area. A 200-day average, the first challenge of it, is important. Take a look here. When you got over it, you went a bit sideways, and then you never looked back. It, could this be telling us a story? You got to pay attention. In the 10-year notes, the trend is down. You're embedded. I think the market gets sold on the rallies. It's that simple. Five-year, same identical thing. Until you lose that embedded reading, I think you keep adding yield to these markets. In the dollar index, today was an important day. The market held uh, and it stayed embedded. Next stopping spot could be the 10640 area if it wants to move higher. And in the euro currency, it looks to me like you've now got the lower highs, lower lows. I am bearish. I'll show you the uh, what I've got for you in a report that goes off our website tomorrow. My video reports are only up three business days. And when I put them up, you either look at them or you don't get a chance again. I think you'll find what I did there important because I do discuss, are we going back to parity? First stopping spot could be the 104 area, if I'm right. So you, you see where this is going, and that, that's where we were. Let's come here to the British pound. Still looks bearish to me. I see it coming down, and I realize people are going, oh, they had some reports that just came out. They, they looked a little hot for this or that. They're dying. The prime minister there needs to get interest rates to come down. We'll see if the bank accommodates them. I don't see anything friendly for that. Then in Bitcoin, so... We have the having event taking place on the 20th. So Saturday is when that happens. And what it means is that you're a miner and you're paying X amount for your electricity. You got all your computers there and your cost of mining take X amount of dollars. It doubles your cost starting on Saturday to get the same Bitcoin. So a lot of the miners will go kaput doesn't make financial sense to stay in the business if they're not super, super efficient and they have dollars to absorb the higher cost of doing this. This is all pre-planned. It's how it was created. We'll see if you get a bid. You have an idea if you can take out these highs that the market has said, okay, the short covering that I thought would happen is happening and maybe this is where the market tries to find its legs, but it hasn't thrown out a buy, a buy signal. Then we look at the Brent versus WTI crude. It seems to me it wants to get back to this 18-day moving average of closes to fight a battle there. I'm still very much in the bear camp, but oversold in the energy. Lower highs, lower lows. And again, this market, just like stock indices, was just moving its way up. It suddenly changed. And it all ended last Saturday with the buy the rumor, sell the fact. If you think about it, if you look at the price chart, Forget what you think. Look at the price chart. It peaked out when Iran did attack Israel, and 
the energy markets have fallen. Just the opposite that the logic would tell you would happen is happening. Coming down here too, I look for the 8050 area to be supportive. You know I'm friendly gasoline for the spring summer, but this is April 18th. This is not spring summer driving yet. That happens at, uh, later in May, a month from now, but the market won't wait for a month. So you're always looking, is this market telling you to do anything? Yeah, it's telling you not to be long right now. And in natural gas, there's still a lot of it. The market needs to close over the 18-day average to convince us that maybe, just maybe, prices have gotten down to the point where demand becomes a big factor and people will need more. But again, it's that funny time of the year. You don't need heat. You don't need air conditioning. You can keep your windows open and be comfortable in your house. Um, trend and chart analysis. This is how I do my reports. So you're going to get video commentary on the markets. I'm going to cover for you seasonal charts in, in two different ways, something I've never done month by month and giving you percentages, gain or not. I'm going to talk about the world events. I'm going to bring you into the monthly charts, the daily charts, try to show you what I'm seeing, where our price counts are showing where this market might go, and give you the reasons for what I'm doing. Time sensitive. This is why I keep my reports up three business days. They're not meant to be a history lesson. They're for right now. They're the things to do today, at this point in time, getting your orders ready, whatever it is, and you see why. You don't have to agree with me and you don't have to trade off of it. I'm just showing you what I think. So in order to get this, all you gotta do is through the top, you'll see an icon if you're on your PC. If not, go to irapstein.com, research at the top right, give it a click, you'll see the report. It goes off our website tomorrow. I'm not gonna tell you the time, but I promise you, when you go there Saturday, it ain't there. I'm Ira, you have yourself a good evening, speak to you in the morning.